four very different perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live, interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. And welcome to the Fatal 4-Way, live here on ON TV, along with Sean Grugel, Brian Balf, Hollywood Q, I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here this week. Gentlemen, it seems like it's been forever since we've been able to to do this with scheduling conflicts, um, a little bout of the ick, as it were. Uh, but we're back here. We've got a lot to talk about, and we're going to start things off with uh, something that's more homegrown here. Not homegrown, but it's going to affect our home base out of where we're uh, broadcasting from. Uh, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, TNA, is bringing their biggest pay-per-view of the year to the Detroit area. It happens on October the 26th. It is Bound for Glory. And there is a lot of anticipation for this particular show because the main event features two of the best in the business right now. One a longtime veteran, another one on the rise. The TNA Championship is going to be on the line, Nick Nemeth and Joe Hendry. And, and the fact that it's coming to Detroit, Wayne State University Fieldhouse is going to host this thing. This and, and the impact tapings on the next day. But for TNA to actually take their show on the road in this matter, bringing Bowel for Glory to the Detroit area, this is a huge vote of confidence in what their future looks like, number one. And number two, Q, a lot of this has to be accredited, for the lack of a better term, to their association with WWE, right? Because that's what's bringing a lot of renewed eyeballs to this product. W would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, WWE is definitely helping them out. I mean, if you think about TNA, TNA has been hanging on forever. I mean, since uh, WCW pretty much went out of business not too long after TNA was born. And uh, TNA has been, you know, it went through its ups and downs and everything. It's on a probably on a network channel that you probably don't even never even heard of and now they have this association with uh wwe uh specifically nxt right it's uh really shining a new life on them sean from a promotional standpoint we're looking at the main event here this is the match that's supposed to draw the people in and for tna i really don't think they could capitalize any sooner on the growing popularity of joe hendry you put him in the ring with an established veteran a guy that who has long been regarded one of the best in-ring performers of a generation in nick nemeth formerly known as dolph ziggler for tna how important is it that this match is everything that we hope and expect it to, to be? Let's face it, Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth, whatever you want to call him, he's probably one of the best performers in the ring today. Uh, Joe Hendry, I'd say 95% of the world right now believes in Joe Hendry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm kind of looking at it like this. You know, we had Zachary Wentz show up to NXT with the X Division Championship. How cool is it going to be to see Trick Williams versus Joe Hendry, possibly title for title here in the near future? Because Nick Nemeth has made no, mis no bones about it. He is there to help this young talent grow. And for Joe Hendry to be able to step up onto a stage, well, I mean, Wayne State University, okay, let's call it what it is because Scott Demore, he runs a wrestling school, which is the primary uh, over in Toronto, uh, Border City Wrestling. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of those fans, I think, are going to come over here as well. Uh, so I think it, it's going to be a sold-out, jam-packed gymnasium, if you will. But I'm not trying to take nothing away from what Wayne State University has or doesn't have. But... 
when you look at Joe Hendry, he is not just the future of TNA. He's the future of NXT and possibly the WWE in a few years to come. I was going to make mention of that, Brian. It's a great uh, segue here because I, I, I want to get your opinion on this match, who you see, how you would see this match going, and is this the catapult that Joe Hendry needs? Because I think all of us are in agreement that it's just a matter of time before this dude is under the WWE banner. But winning the TNA title against a, an established star that, that Nick Nemeth is, how important is this for Joe Hendry as a performer and the fastest rising star that we've seen this year? I, yeah, I think it's important because you look at people differently when they carry a belt. I mean, you know you're not supposed to use the term belt. Nah, it but is what it we're is. We're talking about TNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old man's gone anyway. <laughs> having him in the spotlight, having him in the championship arena, uh, I think it takes it to the next level. And you, once you see how he operates with that, with like I said, with the belt around him, I think you're going to see, is he potentially ready to make that next jump forward to NXT or eventually WWE? We have maintained... You know, not necessarily on the air, but we have had conversations where we have said for a long time, TNA could be something of a developmental group for one of the bigger promotions, WWE or AEW. And we kind of really thought we were going to see that. They, they, had a, they teased a relationship with AEW, and then they quickly went, went, off, went off the rails. Um, but their association with WWE has really helped with this renewed interest in the brand and you know I'm very excited for them not only as a fan because more more product is better competition and when you have better competition right. you have a better overall vi visual experience no oh, matter yeah. what brand you're watching right uh, but TNA is in a very unique spot right now and they ha they have all of the tools, they have all of the momentum going right now, and this pay-per-view has the potential to really put them on that next level, especially, you know, the Detroit area is nothing new to TNA. They brought Bound for Glory here back in 2006, I thought, I, th I think it was. Yeah, it was Kurt Angle's mm -hmm. first appearance as the guest referee for the main event. I was actually at that show. Um, the only TNA show I've, I've ever been to. But you compare the company, what it was then, to what we have here now. One of my bold pr predictions was that TNA was going to become the number two pr promotion in this country. This event could be the start for this if it's pulled off the way it needs to be. And they will also stay in Wayne State University for the next day because they're going to be doing a series of Impact TV tapings um, on uh, the 27th. So that's, that's going to be pretty cool. But I want to make mention of this, too, because this is something that came across my radar. And it really did not get the kind of spotlight that I feel like it should. Um, Inside the ropes wrestling.com broke a story where um, impact TV tapings were to be held in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, TNA had to make the move to, to take all of that and move it over to Nashville, t Tennessee because of the hurricane that came in and decimated the Carolinas. Like I, I, like, I, I'll be straight up. I, I did not pay any attention to the hurricane warnings, you know, because how many times have we heard hurricane warnings and there's been there's been flooding and there's been some damage, but nothing on the level that we have seen with Helene here. And we certainly want, want to send out our thoughts and prayers to all of those who are affected. But TNA is doing something pretty damn re remarkable and it really needs to, to be spotlighted. Because they had to move their show from Spartanburg over to Nashville, they are taking a portion of their proceeds from the Nashville TV tapings and donating it to the victims of this hurricane. And I really feel like that needs to be spotlighted. It needs to be made mention of because it, they didn't have to, you know what I mean? But that just goes to show, for me, 
it just goes to show what kind of people they have running th this promotion and they're doing it for the right reasons. Would you, would you agree with that, Q? Absolutely. That's a, I mean, that's a great thing. I mean, I uh, really wish you would have said no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that, that's pretty awesome, especially the fact that uh, TNA is not the biggest promotion. I mean, you know, they're not bringing in the big bucks. They don't have the the TV, the big TV deals that uh, you know, AEW and WWE has. You know, they're bringing in all that money from that. Uh, TNA is relatively small. It's kind of like a. a, a a supersized indie company, you know, but they're still, you know, having that mindset to really help out, you know, people that's really going through down south. So it's it's it's, it's pretty awesome what they're doing. It really is, and kudos to those who are running total nonstop action wrestling for for doing that. It, it's very very commendable. Uh, we're going to shift gears now over to All Elite Wrestling. And after months of anticipation, months of wonder, months of speculation, what was going to happen with their TV rights deal? Well, it would appear that they have come to some sort of an agreement with Warner Brothers D Discovery. Um, the details on this have been pretty vague. Uh, what we do know is that the wrestling pr promotion has signed a multi-platform, multi multi-platform, multi-year deal with Warner Brothers D Discovery, where AEW Dynamite and Collision will continue to air on TBS and TNT, but will also simulcast on Max for U.S. subscribers beginning in January with an on-demand available. AEW pay-per-views will also get a discounted rate for max su subscribers. So um, there it is. We kind of knew that uh, it was going to land somewhere with Warner Brothers. We just weren't sure how that was going to work out. And then the news had come in. If we had gone on the air two weeks ago, we would have been talking p potentially about them going to Fox uh, because that news had broke too. Uh, but Brian... You know, now that AEW finally has their their TV rights deal done, what does this do for for the promotion in terms of getting that monkey off their back? They can now focus on more important things like how to run a damn show, right? Yeah, I'm sure they're <laughs> breathing a sigh of relief, especially the way things have been going lately. Like I said, I just saw that the attendance or the viewing numbers were down again. Um, I actually. Looking forward to it being on Max streaming. I have Max, and kind of like, oh, maybe I will flick it over every once in a while, see what's going on over there. I'm like, I don't think I'll be getting a part of that disc. I'm curious on what the price will be on those pay-per-views. Right. Like, I know they don't want to go to the same model as WWE did because they say, well, once you build a popularity, then you can't ever go back. Right. But the popularity comes because you did it. Absolutely. Uh, Sean, this is this is a deal that you know Warner Brothers is going to be sh shoveling a boatload of money into AEW. You pay pretty close attention to the overall product, you know, presentation, what's happening in the ring, just the overall experience that is an AEW show. With this new deal, with this new revenue income that that they're going to be having at their disposal, what can they focus on right now to improve the overall product? Because right now, and I don't care if you're a fan or not, you cannot dismiss the, the numbers. This thing is going down like the Hindenburg right at this second. Yeah, I, I'm kind of confused too because I heard that they were supposed to be changing the name of Collision too uh, in coinciding with this new deal. I think they're calling the AEW concussion. Is that what <laughs> we know? Um, no, actually, let's face it, man. They, they need to get someone in there who can control the book, who knows how to write for the flow of a show. I know we have, you know, guys out here like Don Holland and, uh, you know, Andrew Jones up there at uh, Back in Derrigan Toys that will argue with me all day long about this. But when you got a guy like Ricochet and another guy like Will Ospreay and you're putting them into Curtain Jerker, when you're, that's your starting match. There, to me, I think, you know, I could 
get a six-year-old wrestling fan to book a show better than Tony Khan. Mm. It's not conducive to business. Me, myself, I would have built that match and built that match and built that match. Tried to get some of the higher pay-per-view, you know, buy rights, especially with the Smack deal when, you know, uh, people are going to take advantage of the fact that they're going to get a discount now on the pay-per-views. You know, I want to present something, you know, I don't want to be uh, starting out my main course with caviar and then finishing up with a little Debbie peanut butter bar. You know what I'm saying? I want to start the meal off light and eventually fill you up to where you're going to want to come back for a second serving at another time. Always the fat guy with food. I'm sorry. <laughs> Q? It's all right. <laughs> you're a wrestling fan. Yes, I am. Do you have Max? I do. Okay, now if you didn't, would this AEW deal and their association with, with that platform entice you to subscribe to Max? You know what? That's a, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe not. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm going to be curious to see what Max's subscription numbers look like once this thing goes goes into effect. How much of that is going to be a needle mover? Now, a, a moment or two ago, Mr. Grugel alluded to the word concussion, and it's timely because I want to make focus on this that went down this past week at recent... Uh, what was being taped for Ring of Honor television prior to, I believe, the Dynamite uh, live broadcast. Uh, two of AEW su superstars or two professional wrestlers under the AEW banner, I guess I should say, were stretchered out in separate matches because of injuries that were s sustained during these matches. And look, make no mistake about it, wrestling is not ballet. I understand that wholeheartedly. However, we're seeing this more and more often where these, these reckless matches are resulting with unnecessary injuries. Uh, Sammy Guevara and um, an independent worker known as Kelly Madden uh, were both taken out of the ring on stretchers this past week. And much to like what Sean was saying, uh, they've got to get somebody in there to reel this in before somebody gets permanently and seriously injured here, right, Q? Well, I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are getting hurt left and right. But uh, you know what I, 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 a problem I think I see here is uh, these people are, or as in the super, or the wrestlers, uh, they are really trying to go balls out. I mean, and it's crazy because it's, it's almost like they're competing with each other, you know, and the roster is bloated. So when you get that time, when you get that spot on TV, you get that, you finally get that match, you want to do every move in the book. And right. before you know it, all of these, all people are getting hurt because they're trying to outperform each other. And then on top of that, AEW does not do live events. So these people are not even getting rounds to practice some of this stuff. This is true. So, I mean, you got people that haven't wrestled in weeks, and then they're just going right out there on TV and say, well, let's bust out this 6.30 and do all of this stuff, and then they, when they land on their head, I mean, where did you guys go over this? Well, I don't think they got booking agents or controls in place to stop these workers from doing this. I mean, look at Daniel Bryan, for goodness sakes. I mean, he's out there doing things he should no way near be doing right now, and... You know, the, the, the guy's going to wind up in a wheelchair before too long. Yeah, it's, like Edge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Um, Brian, do you want to add anything to anything about the AEW, uh, the TV rights deal, or the injuries to Quivara and, and Kelly Madden? Uh, just for the TV rights deal, I will say this too. As an ATT subscriber, I get Max for free. So they will have. Me too. All of those people well, look at you immediately <laughs> get an access. Fancy guys. Fancy. Well, I get Netflix well, from T-Mobile. It's, <laughs> it's, it's better than what TNA's got. I, I put out the other day like an SOS, hey, I want to watch some TNA wrestling, and they're telling me that they are on AXS. Access. Yeah. Access. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I don't, don't have, have access to it. Yeah, and uh, I yeah. when I go on Roku, they got Roku live stream, and it's like TNA wrestling all the time, but it's from like 
2006. Right. Yeah. So it's nothing but the product is now. So literally, I hope when WWE gets all their ducks in a row, they can put a couple more ducks in the rear end. What? Hypothetically wow. speaking. What <laughs> 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 show. <laughs> Put, put a, a couple ducks in, in their row and help TNA along in getting a better deal than what yeah. they got. <laughs> yeah. No ducks in the butt in this area. I'm sorry, guys. No ducks <laughs> in the crack. <laughs> Can't go wrong if it's live. <laughs> if you have an opinion on what we've talked about so far with TNA coming to Detroit or the AEW TV deal or anything that, that we have talked about, um, you can join the conversation. You can call us at 810-228-7233. It is a new number. We had to get a new number, but uh, the lines are open. If you want to join the conversation, by all means, please do so. With that, we're going to turn our attention to Atlanta, Georgia, and tomorrow evening's WWE Bad Blood Premium Live event, aptly named for the matches that they have um booked for this particular show there is a source of contention here in terms of the rumors as to what the lineup of these matches are going to be uh, I had seen that they were planning on opening up with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre that is the Hell in a Cell match um, that is scheduled for this event they are on the main graphic why would they not be closing out the show um, the other possibility would be this tag team match with WWE champion Cody Rhodes teaming with Roman Reigns to take on Solo Sokoa and Jacob Apat too. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about this off air, um, gentlemen, but we'll, we'll go around the horn here and get, and get your opinion on this. Of the two matches, what should be the match that closes out? Brian, we'll start with you. I would go with the Hell in the Cell match. I, I think they get like it's been built up. I mean, for multiple months now. Yeah. I think this will actually be the end to this feud between the two of them. So if if it's the end of a chapter, like the, you put it at the end of the book. He brings up a good point. We started this story can go back to the Royal Rumble where Punk was injured at the hands of McIntyre. It went through WrestleMania. We saw what went down with McIntyre winning the world title. And then, you know, everything, his altercation with Punk would lead to Damian Priest cashing in money in the bank. McIntyre losing the title. Punk has screwed him out of the title every opportunity that he has gotten. They had, you know, the match at SummerSlam and they, they had their, their rematch. And now this is the blow off. It is hell in the cell. This is, in my opinion, what the whole show was built around. I said this months ago. Sean, what match closes out? It has to be this one. As much as I hate that graphic, and I keep looking at it, because this is the first time I've seen it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, they, they both look like they just got done mining coal. I yeah, just, I was thinking they look very dirty. Yeah, I, I don't like this graphic at all. Um, I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, really, Cody has really proven our, well, most of our points. I think all of our points is coming up as a, you know, a lackluster champion as far as, you know, as far as I'm concerned at this point, um, especially now that the guy I'm teaming with Roman Reigns, because now we see the writing on the wall that Kevin Owens is going to get involved in this somehow. Randy Orton's going to get involved with this somehow. This is the final chapter. This should be the final match. Uh, not only storyline wise, but let's face it, Jason, as promoters, that hell in the cell, I mean, it doesn't take long for them to drop it and pick it back right. up, but that's what adds that main event excitement to something because, you know, in WWE, you could look at it and say, yeah, unlike AEW, you know, this is going to be entertaining. You know, we're in AEW, they'd probably use that cage and throw someone off and land on their head and, and cuss and. But this this is the main event. Is there any other matches announced for this thing? Yes, I, I have the card here. Okay. We'll, we'll run it down real quick. But Q, is this the main event, McIntyre and Punk, you think? It has to be. And a couple of points to uh, point out. The reason why I believe it should is definitely what you all said pretty much. Uh, this is a blood, blood feud that's been going on for almost a year. And uh, really, 
Think about CM Punk. I mean, he's been a good boy. Right. Yeah, let's not get let's let's not get them all going crazy and then he's out of here again and he's, or he's beating people up in the backstage area and all that stuff. This is the feud that needs to close. This is bad blood. <laughs> Maybe if it was some other pay-per-view, but this is bad blood, so it needs to be this feud here and Cody and Roman. It's not only now Cody's title run has been lackluster, but I want to also put the blame on the writing for that. Oh, yeah. Because he had no credible heels to fight. Solo is your biggest heel on SmackDown. So that, that and he's getting pinned tomorrow. So he's not, <laughs> he's not, that you can't close with that. Hey, Jason, I know you normally ask the questions, but I want to go off script and ask you a question. Oh, because hell. You, oh. <laughs> oh, man. You and I were mic guys. You and I could talk on a microphone all day long. Mm -hmm. While this has been a physical battle, it's also been a big-time battle of words. Yeah. Who has won the battle of words going into this match? Drew McIntyre. Drew? Drew McIntyre, hands down. Drew McIntyre has done his best work of his career with this rivalry. He, you got to see Drew McIntyre for what he could be. Yeah. And if this does not, and I don't care who wins this, it does wonders for both, but Drew McIntyre, if he was to lose this match, you could still easily put him in the main event picture and make it make sense because he makes it make sense. You believe every damn thing that he does, everything that he says. And I am so, and I've been on this guy's bandwagon for a while. I want nothing more for this guy to have a reputable run as world champion. He deserves this. Win or lose, he's not going to be in a bad spot. Punk needs this match more than McIntyre does, based solely on how McIntyre has presented himself throughout the duration of this rivalry. And he's great. He's great on social media. Oh, yeah. Oh, my That's God. a huge part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, you got to see his personality come out. You know what I mean? And you're like, damn, this guy, this guy, he's take nothing away from what he does from bell to bell. One of the best, you know, for a big man. And he's yeah. a big man. Like, people don't understand how big Drew McIntyre is. But to move the way that he does, and that, you know, take that away. But his promos, his presentation, how he interacts with people, he is the consummate professional wrestler. And WWE has had this window of opportunity to really pull the trigger on this guy and make him the guy. This match is going to put on display why that is a thing with them and why this he, he needs to be the one that gets protected, booking-wise, yeah. you know what I mean? Do not drop the ball with Drew McIntyre. You've done it several, several times, and he's picked it back up every single time. This match is, in my opinion, should be the main event, for sure. Um, Unanimous. Yeah. Yep. We've, we've talked about Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns against Solo, Sokoa, Jacob Fatu. Curtain jerker. Yeah. Um, and then we will also see the women's world title on the line, Liv Morgan against Rhea Ripley, uh, another one of these long-standing rivalries. And I'm glad to see that this match is going to be included with the overall theme of Bad Blood, too, aptly yeah. named, as we can make, make that same argument for Damian Priest when he goes one-on-one -on -one with Finn Balor. And then Nia Jax is going to defend the WWE women's title against Bayley. Um, Q, we'll start with you. Let's give it. Let's get your rundown real quick. Your your predictions on these matches. All right, here we go. Nia Jax is winning. Okay. I mean, we don't Bailey. Bailey did not have the run that she needed to have, but she's not getting it back. And we're not going to see a cash in. It's not. It's not time yet because they're building to that. They're, they're building Tiffy to be that baby face that's going to steal it. So. And plus, Christmas is coming up. You got to sell those briefcases. <laughs> <laughs> True. True story. I believe that uh, Damian Priest will defeat Finn Balor. Finn Balor has not been the same. He, I, Finn Balor, need, I'm, I'm tired of Finn Balor being in the judgment day at this point. Um, and Damian Priest, he's, you know, he, I think he needs it. 
Okay. Uh, who do we got? Rhea and... Rhea and Liv? Rhea and Liv. I can see Liv winning this. Really? I can see Liv winning this with some help. Might not be from Dom, but uh, I can see somebody like Raquel Rodriguez coming back. Oh. Oh, you think yeah, a little the ace box. in the hole, a little ace in the okay. hole, yeah, because she was actually involved with both of the women. Mm -hmm. Um, who who we got? Is that everybody? The who Cody are? Roman and the Bloodline. Oh yeah, I said that. Solo's getting pinned. Then, okay. so, then they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna run some type of angle. What 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 I want to see is, I want to see uh, something something, maybe either cinematic or something. Uh, cool to happen after that match and it's going to involve the rock if the rock can be there because he's in he, he's in georgia oh he, he went to a game tonight he okay. went to a football game tonight so he's there and he's he like he either shows up and say you know what solo wasn't the guy in the first place i'm the guy right or if he's not there do a cinematic with him in his terramana tequila Whoa. all right solo you dropped the ball now i gotta come and save the day well, this is the last pay per view before the Survivor Series War Games. Yeah. So now would be that time to. And his schedule the was cleared. Yeah. Uh, Sean, what what's your takes on on these matches for Bad Blood to tomorrow afternoon? Uh, okay. Um, what was the okay? Nia Jax and Bailey. <laughs> uh, Nia Jax has to go over Bailey. Bailey is nowhere near what she was, and she will never like Q said, be able to have that title run again. It's just not going to be a thing. Uh, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley needs this, in my opinion, because her star is starting to, you know, fade fade a little bit. So uh, I'm thinking, yeah, we're going to see Rhea Ripley over Liv, as much as I hate to say because I have loved what Liv has done here in the last six months. Uh, Cody and Roman... I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I want to see Roman turn on Cody, but then again, at the same time, I do see a Randy Orton and a Kevin Owens getting involved somehow. Um, myself, I want to see uh, Solo and Fatu go over. I want to see it. And then lastly, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Um, oh, I didn't do that one. Well, I'll, 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 I'll let you go first, Q. <laughs> It's just the damn main event that we've been sitting here talking 20 minutes about, but that's cool. Punk. I'm going punk. Are you? I'm going punk. Uh, I'm going Drew, man. Drew has sacrificed a whole lot to get here. I mean, lost the title in 30 seconds, the what, uh, Money in the Bank briefcase or something. He, he's just been time after time after time. The rug gets pulled out from underneath his feet. I think this is the finally the time that CM Punk... Maybe grows a backbone and puts someone over for a change, and I think it's going to be true. Brian. All right. Uh, let's see. Nia Jax versus Bailey. Um, Nia will retain. We're going to still tease the Tiffany angle for a while for possibly turning it in. I, I, honestly think that they're going to have Naomi come in and turn heel on Bailey. So they have something for Bailey to do afterwards. Makes sense. Um, Priest versus Baylor. Oh man, I feel like it's gonna go split with the Terror Twins and Judgment Day, and I don't know which one's gonna win. I could see either one of those matches going either way. I, I'll go Finn Baylor over Damian because I think Finn needs it more. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Liv and Rhea. I mean, have we even mentioned the fact that you got Dominic over the, the top in a shark cage? <laughs> oh, I have kind of forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, I shark wish that cage. wasn't a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we're going to get some interference in that. Um, I don't even understand why. I'll put Rhea. I'll, have, I'll say Rhea will win, but, man, when she's got the belt, who can stop her? Right. Yeah. It's just like yeah, what's after there's, there's that? nothing yeah. for her. And, Charlotte Flair. And Liv has done a great she, job with the belt. So... <laughs> That's a hard one. It, it could go either way. Um, Lyra Valkyrie. Cody and Roman versus Solo <laughs> and Jacob Fatu. I think we finally will see Tala Tonga show up. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He's not. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll finally see that. But I think it's going to be bigger than that because I don't know if you guys seen Cody on the Pat McAfee show and his little tweet thing. I think he tweeted it out even. 
expect something big to happen in that match, and it will relate later on to, I think they said Crown Jewel. I'm expecting something big. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I think we might see The Rock show up as well. But I will pick Cody and Roman to win. I think I think Roman will prove that he has Cody's back and he'll take it. Some type of bump for Cody. Uh, Punk versus McIntyre. I'm going to go Punk. Punk needs it more than McIntyre. And like you said, McIntyre, even, I, th- I, I think they're going to give it their all in this. I think it's going to be crazy. Yeah. So at the end of this match, I think you're going to see two basically destroyed people in the middle of that ring. Yep. Yeah. Well, then you got to separate them after that. Right. Yeah. Well, right. We got some predictions in the room. Q, you want to? What have we got? Uh, if you have a prediction and you are watching us live on, on the Facebook feed, you break. can leave us a comment. Yeah, we'll read it on the air, or the lines are open, 810-228-7233. If you want to join the conversation real quick before we go to break, what, what do we got in, in the comments? Please? All right. Dennis Ryan says, Naya over Bailey. We all agree to that. Mm-hmm. Finn over Priest. Rhea over Liv. Uh, Bloodline over Roman and Cody. Drew over punk okay i only agreed with one (laughs) (laughs) wow all right uh what we're going to do we're going to run a quick timeout and we will be back with more of the fatal four-way live on on tv right after this the lake orion dda invites families to take part in the halloween extravaganza on wednesday october 16th things will kick off with the return of the halloween kids parade Participants are asked to gather at Village Hall at 5.30, and then at 6 p.m. the parade will travel along Anderson Street all the way to Children's Park. There will be music and activities in Children's Park, and kids will receive a trick-or-treat trail map that will guide you to businesses handing out goodies and other fun stops along the way. And best of all, the event is free to the public. Mark your calendar. The Halloween extravaganza takes place on Wednesday, October 16th. Wear a costume and bring a camera for plenty of photo ops. For more information, visit downtownlakeorion.org. Join us for an evening of Halloween fun at Boo Bash on Friday, October 18th, beginning at 5 p.m. at the Orient Center. Stroll down Trick or Treat Street, play carnival games, take a hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch, enjoy face painting, crafts, cider and treats, and have an encounter with live bats courtesy of the Leslie Science and Nature Center. Registration is required. Vendors are welcome. For more information, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. And we welcome you back to the Fatal 4-Way live here on ONTV. We appreciate you tuning in here this week. If you want to be a part of the conversation, the number is 810-228-7233. Or if you're watching us through the Facebook feed, you can leave us a comment on there as well. Uh, We will start this segment off with the much-anticipated Mount Rushmore, Mr. Balf. Please take it away. Okay. Uh, No graphic. Um, no potato. We decided head. to do this week for Mount Rushmore. Uh, our favorite feuds. So first up, I have Brett versus Owen Hart. Um, I, I just like I'm classic. You got your brother versus brother. Who um, can't relate to that, yeah. right? The yeah. greatest brother versus brother yeah. feud to me. Yeah, for sure. Um, how was that one? Kane and Undertaker. Ooh. Yes. I'll be <laughs> Okay. I, I too. <laughs> yes. uh, s- second up, I went Stone Cold versus McMahon. I mean, especially with the McMahon documentary out. I mean, we just, I just got to watch that and relive that whole little bit. Yeah, that was cool. It was great. Uh, Ric Flair versus Ricky Steamboat. Kind of wanted to do a classic one where I think it great was one. more in the ring than it was outside of the yeah. ring for, for one. And then uh, WCW versus NWO. Just because... I remember me and my buddies being like 15, 16, 17 at the time. And man, that was all we cared about. What was going to happen Monday yeah. night? It was defecting. Yeah, uh, as a sidebar, anybody who wants to watch a trilogy of damn near the most perfect professional wrestling matches you will ever see, go watch the Flair's Steamboat t- trilogy from 1989. 
for the NWA World Championship. Some incredible matches. Uh, Sean, let's go over to your Mount Rushmore and your top rivalries. All right, well, uh, Macho Man versus Jake the Snake Roberts. I'll never get the image of the Cobra fighting the <laughs> Macho Man on his wedding day. Uh, yep. Huge. Of course, Stone Cold versus Mr. McMahon. I mean, how can you not love a feud where a bedpan gets involved? Don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> WCW versus the NWO. I mean... It was so good up until it got so oversaturated. Yeah. Uh, and like we were talking about, just wondering who was going to defect to WCW, you know, during the Monday Night Wars. And then, of course, the one feud you will never get away with in this time or this <laughs> generation, D Generation X versus the Nation of Domination. Let's just not get into it too much, but let's just say when you see X Pac do Mark Henry, you will never be the same I know, again. Man, that was crazy. <laughs> that was <laughs> Listen, you're, when you said that could never be replicated in this day yeah. and age, like there is not a more true statement to That's be made. Right. Because <laughs> my goodness, because it's banned. All you, yeah, <laughs> all you gotta do. Is, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Yeah, go oh, yeah, go yeah. ahead and throw it yeah. in the Google machine. And <laughs> the brother was bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Quadell Edwards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yours was so. so easy to make. Can I just tell you that? <laughs> I'm sure it was. <laughs> Goldberg looks like such a baby oh, to Brett. Yeah. I said I kind of went with like some real life feuds <laughs> because Bret Hart hates everyone. One thing I love about Bret Hart is he's he's real. <laughs> he is real. He will tell you how he feels. I mean, he still talks about Bill Goldberg, how much he hates him, and he's ended his career. And you got the whole um, thing with Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels when it comes to the Montreal screw job and how much he hated them for years, how he gave Vince the black eye and everything. You can actually relive a lot of that on, uh, on the Vince document documentary. Uh, man, then you have... Uh, WWF and WCW, which is also relived heavily on the Vince documentary. So many people defected back and forth. I mean, Turner and Vince, I could have just put them two, you know, right. because uh, really, Turner wasn't thinking about Vince. Vince was thinking about Turner. And uh, Eric Bischoff was thinking about Vince. Right. <laughs> so it was kind of like... And this. that right there is, was the catalyst <laughs> of what made WCW so successful in the in, in the way that it was. Yeah. Because Vince was worried about turning. He didn't give a crap about an Eric Bischoff. Right. Who was Eric Bischoff? Yep. Well, he soon found out who the yeah. hell Eric Bischoff was. He didn't was even know who Eric was for a while. Yeah. 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 Right. He didn't even know who Eric Bischoff was. And he applied for the company like a year prior. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <announcer>. <laughs> Sell me this broom, pal. I know you guys remember the old skits that they were doing. I think it was that. 96, 97 <laughs> with the billionaire Ted yeah. yeah. thing thing yep. and uh, the, the Nacho Man and, and what is that? The, the Huckster. The Huckster. Yep. Scheme Gene. Scheme Gene. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. You're talking about Vince was in his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> he was in his feelings. I mean, and they actually got complaints about that. So yeah. they had to take that down. Yeah. Right? They had to pretty much kill it. Yeah, they were... They were going to have, have this this mock match at WrestleMania 12, and they Ooh, good, they man. both passed out from oxygen deprivation and all this <laughs> other stuff. All right, my <laughs> Mount Rushmore, I focused uh, more heavy, you know, I kind of went old school with, with mine, obviously. As a fan, it got no bigger than Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Uh, and I also wanted to stay away from the ones that, you guys went with. I really want to, because I mean, you talk about professional wrestling, rivalries have been a thing f since the beginning, right? I'm like, how do you pick yeah. just four? Well, I picked the ones that were my, my personal f favorites. Hogan and Andre obviously culminating with WrestleMania three at the Silver Dome. They would have matches after the fact, but it really was that match, you know what I mean? Undertaker and Mankind, I mean, that was the first time somebody really posed a psychological threat to The too. Undertaker. The, just the too, yeah. the amount of stipulations that they came out with, the buried boiler alive, room. boiler room bra. Uh, I love that, man. Yeah, it, it was really something else. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock. This was the pivotal rivalry of the Attitude Era for the WWF side of things that didn't involve Vince McMahon solely. Headlining three WrestleManias, I mean, it really, 
Austin and, and uh, The Rock, the mutual respect that they had for each other, the professional respect that they had, you know, that's what elevated both of them yeah. to the heights that they went. Who do you think's better, the in-ring work or the mic work between those two? Now that that's a tough one. It's, that's I gotta say, because really you eat, immediately you'd almost be like mic work, but then when you think about it, it's like they were great. Oh, man, the, the in-ring story, was great too. The stories they told physically. In addition to yeah. verbally, I yeah. mean, were they five star Meltzer masterpieces? No, but the stories that they told had us as fans emotionally yeah. involved. Yeah. The way they controlled package. that crowd, yeah. the way that crowd reacted to them, what you heard, what you, what you seen in that crowd when they would do their thing, that was magic. That was magic. And when I think of the National Wrestling Alliance, the Jim Crockett pr promotions era of professional wrestling, the precursor to world championship wrestling, I think of Magnum TA and Tully Blanchard. Because as a kid, seeing and hearing the rivalry between these two, I felt like these two legitimately hated each other. And they got so personal with their promos leading up to their series of matches. And before they got to Starcade. They had some amazing matches for the national and the television championships. But that I Quit match at Starcade 85 remains one, one of my favorite matches. It is in my top 10 favorite matches of all time to this day. Just because of how everything culminated perfectly into what is a blow off. You know, the one match that's going to end this feud. We've, we've, we sat here earlier in the program and dissected Punk and McIntyre, that is what I feel about Magnum TA and Tully Ooh. Blanchard. It is on it's that level. Yeah. This is the ultimate way to end this it's rivalry. And um, yeah, so that that's my Mount Rushmore. Is there any more any other comments that we yeah, have before we, we got get? Yeah, uh, we got a couple of them here. Okay. We have Dennis Ryan, his Mount Rushmore is uh, Eddie versus Ray. Custody for Dom. <laughs> 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 you got uh, Randy, Randy Orton against the McMahon family. I remember that. Yeah. Low key. So we're talking yep, about, we're talking about Triple one. H as well. Yep. Uh, you have Shawn Michaels versus Triple H, the SummerSlam buildup, mm -hmm. and uh, you have then he has Austin and Rock. Okay. Some good picks there. Uh, there are some good picks, but we also have here Tim Williams. I want to oh. highlight him. Uh, the Midnight Express versus Rock and Roll Express. That would have been my number two for JCP. Yeah, Bruiser Bruiser Brody against Abdullah the Butcher. Yep, good one. Terry oh, Funk and Ric Flair from the 1989 feud. I wonder. Probably. Yeah, probably. Last one, the British Bulldogs versus Heart Foundation. Great one. I actually, listen, Tim, I'm glad you brought that one up because that one was going to go on my Mount Rushmore, and I'll tell you why, and this is going to sound so stupid. I could not find a PNG graphic of either one of those tag teams <laughs> to make the graphic flow. So that's why I went with Magnum and, and Tully Blanchard. But. You should have said a heart and a couple bulldogs. <laughs> right. I listen. <laughs> I, I, I went into a deep dive trying to find a graphic that I could use for the British Bulldogs and the Heart Foundation because that was my favorite tag team rivalry. If I'm being honest, um, but and if I if I had could if I could have found a PNG file for for these teams, that would have been on my Mount Rushmore. All right. Uh, we have a little, we got about 10 minutes left. Uh, Mr. Grugel, let's turn it over to you for this week's Shooting the Ropes. Shooting the Ropes. Well, I like that graphic. That looks like Daniel Bryan. It kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, hey, oh, Jesus. What, what was that phone number again, Jason? 810-228-7233. So, <laughs> give us a call if you have any more rivalries or if you want to jump in what I'm about to talk about here. So, when I was a kid, and I don't know about you guys. You were uh, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. About 17 years. <laughs> you know, there was a time when I would watch what I saw on TV when it came to professional wrestling, and then me and a group of buddies, we go out there and we would emulate what we would see on television. You know, backyard wrestling. Yep. Um, I remember one time I picked up my buddy Tim Mingle 
front face lock, picked him up, head first into the corner of his bed, jammed his neck. He couldn't move his head for three days. Mm. Sounds great, right? What are we seeing on TV nowadays with AEW? We're seeing guys getting power bombed onto cinder blocks. We're seeing guys getting plastic bags put over their faces. We're seeing guys getting barbed wire wrapped around their mouths. We're seeing people dang near getting set on fire. Syringes. You, syringes going Oof. through people's mouths. Mm. You know, and th this is what I'm going to shoot on today is wrestlers are supposed to be larger than life. They're looked up to. They're looked at as superheroes. And what are we teaching our kids about professional wrestling when we're going on national TV without any warning graphics, without any, you know, don't try this at home, Tony Khan, take a cue from WWE. And we are showing kids, this is what we can do to one another and bounce right back up because in AEW, they know sell and live perfectly happy, normal lives. This is my problem with professional wrestling and this is going to indie promoters out there. If you are advertising professional wrestling on the marquee, let's make sure that we're giving these people professional wrestling because parents are bringing these kids to these shows, shows that you're booking wrestlers on that these kids are looking up to. If you're not telling these parents, if you're not telling these fans, this is what you can expect from our shows. You can expect blood. You can expect violence. You can expect us doing these crazy larger than life stunts. If you're not putting that on your flyers, that this is a PG or NC-17 show or PG-13 show. MA. MA, whatever. You are doing your fans, you are doing this wrestling business a disservice. Because what's going to happen one day when we go on to a news station and we see a news story about a boy putting a bag over his sister's face, suffocating her because that's what he saw on television. Because after that show, that man was just fine. Parents, it's your responsibility to explain to these kids that these are things that could happen if they're doing these things. But it's up to the promoters, it's up to the wrestlers themselves to take responsibility to look out in that crowd and see who they're performing in front of. Because the day a kid comes up dead because of what they saw you do or what they saw on television as a black eye on this business and should never ever ever have to happen warnings need to be put in place ratings need to be given and warnings need to be had and that is this week's shooting the ropes you have anything you want to end on that before i do yeah, that was a great point that's i mean I don't watch the AEW product from open to close. So I don't even know. So they don't put the uh, do not try this at home graphics up or nothing like that. It's crazy because they're doing the most stuff. And and the spots that I've seen with the hangman and uh, uh, swerve match with the syringes and cinder blocks and all. I got cinder blocks in the backyard now. And I have kids. I mean... They could easily be like, you know what, I, let's try that. Let's try that. I mean, you have kids saying that. I was a kid once, just like I said earlier. We were all kids. And I remember going outside and doing a lot of the moves that I seen on WWF television. I mean, I was doing tombstones on the grass. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, if you're not careful, you, you can not only see kids paralyzed or concussed but you're going to see kids dying and we have seen that yeah. before so you know it's it's all about accountability you know you have to be accountable of your product and what you're you're allowing your wrestlers to do in the ring and really you might market for one market but remember that there's still other markets watching absolutely brian do you have anything you want to throw in on this? I mean, I can basically repeat what everybody else said. Same thing, wrestling in the backyard, tinfoil pants, smacking up against each other's heads, bouncing around yeah. on a trampoline. I remember uh, there was a the young boy who did like a tombstone on a, or it was just a, a pile driver on a kid. I think they ended up dying. And that kid, even though he was like 13, 14, was tried as an adult. It was horrible. I mean, I think that was one of the big pushes when they started doing the 
do not do the, try this at home. Yeah, right. But yeah, I mean, especially for a, a promotion like AEW is obviously trying to push it as fast, far as they can. But yeah, yeah. you got to be mindful of that. Yeah. It's for all promotions too. You know, it's not. We're we're not just picking on AEW. I don't want nobody to think that we're just like you know throwing them out there. But it's it's for all the promotions because we, I mean we see stuff in WWE. We're about to have a Hell in a Cell match tomorrow. Right. I mean, so we're gonna see blood. Yeah, but the kid that's got the Hell in a Cell in his backyard, he's spoiled. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a tall fence. <laughs> well, I <clears throat> I have a couple of points I'd like to make on this, and Joe, I apologize ahead of time if I go a minute or two over. Please bear with me, but this is something I'm very passionate about. Children. <laughs> no, I mean stemming off what what Sean talked about. I mean we we've talked about this on the Hot Tag podcast, and it's a it's a topic of conversation that happens in real life. Now, the common argument is, and to play devil's advocate for just a moment, and it will only be a moment, <clears throat> the, the only viable argument that I hear in relation to something like this is, well, what happens when kids start doing stupid crap because of things that they see on video games or things that they see on the Disney Channel or something that they watched in a movie? I understand your point, but I'm going to disregard it. And here's why I'm going to disregard it. Because when you talk about video games, when you talk about movies, when you talk about anything that is presented on a small screen in terms of an entertainment scripted show, you know based on how it is promoted and what it is advertised as as to what you're getting into, you make that concentrated effort to allow that to be infiltrated, to allow that to be a focal point for your entertainment base. What our argument is, and no, we're not picking exclusively on AEW, but AEW is the most blatant, um, how do I, I'm, I'm offender? Uh, okay, thank you. I'm trying to stay within our PG-14 format here. Uh, yeah, they are the most prominent offender because what they were presenting, what they advertised on the night of that pay-per-view, and yes, I understand it happened on pay-per-view, a lot of these cases that, that we're talking about with the cinder block and the syringes and stuff like that. But if you were going to, if you knew as a promoter that you were going to be presenting a more hardcore based presentation that is out of the norm of what you have been presenting, even on pay-per-view, because correct me if I'm wrong, I don't recall hearing about a damn syringe going through a man's face on a previous pay-per-view. You have an obligation and a responsibility to let your consumers know what they are tuning into. You have that responsibility. If you elect to ignore that, you are ignoring a very pivotal part of what makes this business as great as it is. Now, the comparison that I will make will be to Game Changer Wrestling. Anybody who knows what Game Changer Wrestling is knows what you can expect if you choose to take your teenager to a GCW show. There's going to be a lot of blood, there's going to be a lot of violence, there's going to be a lot of projectiles that are going to be going through the air. You know that going into it. So to play off of what Sean was saying and to reiterate what my, uh, my other co-hosts here are saying, I do not accept your argument that you, can, that you can take this and put it with the realm of video games, music videos, <clears throat> movies, and things of this nature. Especially when you as the promoter and you as the one who are at the helm of this thing in terms of how it's advertised and time and how it's presented, you have an obligation and a responsibility. And if you do not <coughs> heed to that, you do not need to be in the wrestling business, period. Well said. <clears throat> All right. Anything else anybody wants to throw out there before we uh, wrap this up? I want to hear a phone call. I want to hear someone defend us, but well, ain't going to happen. That's okay because, you know, we can come back to it. If you have questions, <clears throat> comments, feedback, anything of the like, you can send us a comment to the Fatal 4-Way page on Facebook. 
um, we can bring it back next week and uh, have kind of like a, a wrap around portion of the show where we will address your your opinions and uh, and we will be back here in two weeks time I believe it's going to be October the 18th at 6 p.m. oh I also want to make mention real quick uh, the Bad Blood Premium Live event has a special start time of 6 p.m. T- tomorrow afternoon. It's usually at 8 p.m., but uh, so they don't run into scheduling c- conflicts with UFC. Uh, they have pushed the pay-per-view, the Bad Blood event, start time to 6 p.m., so make note oh, of that get on it. Peacock. Uh, with that, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other, and we'll see you next time right here on the Fatal 4-Way exclusively on ONTV.